You got to get up and move it, move it. You want to lose weight? You want to stay healthy? Got to move it all day long. Turn the music on. Move it. Hear that music? Come on, get the beat. Hello, hello guys. How are you today? It's your girl, Hungry Mama Me. The reason that I'm not doing um, talking is because I have a ton of company and I really didn't want to be rude and sit down and do a mukbang. So, we're trying to do this very quietly. And what I have, what I just showed you, I have my tahini sauce. And to make this tahini sauce, all you do is you can add a little bit of sugar or a little bit of um, a maple syrup, pure maple syrup to your tahini, a couple tablespoons of the tahini then just a little bit of the maple syrup or, or sugar just to sweeten it up a little bit you can put a little garlic onion powder in there um and some water to loosen it up to your desire and that makes your um dressing so that's tahini dressing it's so easy peasy and it is delicious as you'll soon see as I lick my finger. Mmm. Yeah, that's good. And I have to be so discreet. I'm so sorry. But, you know, I don't tell everybody what I do and how I do it. And. I apologize for having to do a voiceover, but sometimes, you know, we got to do what we got to do. I still wanted to put up my video. And as you know here, I have Miss Tina, also known as Valentina. Oh, I didn't even tell you what I was eating, but I will in just a minute. I'll stir this up for you and show you after I add my Valentina. I had stopped eating Valentina for a short time because my stomach was bothering me. I was eating so much hot stuff. But Valentina doesn't seem to bother me. And this lid here is broken and I can never get it on. I have to really sit and play with the Valentina lid. And of course I have my 33 ounce bottle of the Poland Springs and look at this guys a look at this see how discreet I'm trying to be <laughs> I don't want anybody to say I'm holding it up to the camera so sucks so I have a ton of lettuce in here tomato onion these are my tomatoes from my garden, of course. I haven't bought one tomato this whole summer. I'm so happy. I, I don't like the tomatoes in in the store. Sometimes you can go to a produce stand and get a decent tomato. But having cherry tomatoes from your garden, they are as sweet as sweet can be. So I made a burrito bowl and I have, um, mm, wait a minute, I got to taste that. Yes, nice. I had my homemade beans, you know, my canned beans that I did myself, black beans. And I spiced them up, I cooked them a little bit and I added some mm, different things to, to cook them down and make them very tasty. And then I made uh, my rice. I made Bosmati rice, as you know, that's my favorite rice. 
So all I do is I put on the layer, on the bottom layer, I put my Osmati rice and then over that I put my beans and then I put my lettuce. This way your lettuce doesn't wilt on top of the hot stuff, you know, so I, I put my lettuce uh, always on top. Never put your lettuce on the bottom unless you want it to wilt. And um, so I put my lettuce and my tomatoes and my onion and then I make sure I put some kind of dressing on it. Because I find if if you just eat that with the, I don't know, with the rice and the beans and the lettuce and tomato and onion, it's dry. So I need a little bit of dressing. And for this, I usually always opt for the tahini because tahini goes so well with this. You'd be really surprised. Mmm, it's really good, I'm telling you. Very, very tasty. Now, so I have people sitting all around me. And I'm actually watching the computer at the same time. Because I, you know, I'm trying to be discreet. Mm -hmm. Every now and then I look and I see somebody looking at me like, <laughs> what are you doing, girl? As discreet as I'm trying to be. I have some, um, the company is older people and they just really wouldn't understand all this so I don't even bother trying to explain and you know truthfully doing a mukbang on camera is very easy eating is very easy to do in front of somebody but when you're eating and you're trying to talk and you have people around you watching, it can be very difficult. Sometimes actually a little uncomfortable. Most of the time if I have somebody over, and not my family of course, but if I have uh, someone over and you know, it's, it's my family like Junie or I have no problem in front of Junie, my boy, or Emily. You know, I'll ask Emily to jump in on the mukbang and she has no problem doing that. But these are older people that are friends of my aunt. And sometimes you know how older people are. You should have seen, um, a couple days ago, I, I think I told you guys, but for the ones I haven't told, um, my daughter spiked Nino's hair. And it was so, so cute. It was adorable. And he loved it. I should have got a picture, and I'm so sorry I didn't. But, you know, we were in the stores, and he thought it was the neatest thing. And everybody was saying, you know, when we were out, how cute it was and, um, you know, how he, you know, I kept saying, yeah, he thinks he's cool. And he did. He really thought, man, he was a man. He was a big boy. And you know, the only ones that you see whispering and turning their nose up and stuff was the older people, not all of them. I'm not going to say all of them. You know, you had some older people come up that would say, oh, he's so adorable. How'd you get his hair to do that? And then you have some that you, some ladies, not men, you'd see them whispering to each other, you know, oh, look at that boy's hair. Look, look how that mother did that child's hair. But. Again, you know, I told my daughter, 
it's because they come from another generation and back in their generation they didn't do those kind of things that was like unheard of so when they see it now it's very very hard for them to adjust to it so that's one of the reasons that I don't feel comfortable doing my mukbang in front of older people because instead of really sitting and watching, you know, um, they're going to be asking you questions and just really uncomfortable. And then when they leave, it's like, do you believe she's doing something for the inner? It's just, it's very petty. Yes. But I, you know, sometimes you rather not let people know your business. You know what I mean? So what I do, I, I am, I truly, truly am a very, very private person. I don't always like to reveal my life. I can remember when I started going out after I um, was divorced from my husband. I was dating a gentleman and you know we were dating for a while and he started asking me a lot of personal questions and I remember saying to him and, and I didn't mean to be mean or you know I was just really being frank and I said I'm sorry I don't feel like sharing you know I, I am just very very private and even for me to do YouTube and actually let anybody into my life is very unusual for me. So, I hope I don't have to do too many videos like this. I'm sure I will not, but it's better, to me, it's better than not putting up a video at all. I always try to get up a video for you every day if I can possibly. And this burrito bowl is so, so delicious. Also, what you do is you take your um, tortilla chips and you crumble some of the tortilla chips on top of your burrito bowl. So you have a crunch. Ugh, I'm telling you, this is de delicious. Don't be going any place and buying a burrito bowl. Burrito bowls can cost you $12, $13. Very expensive. Make it at home. Throw some guacamole on there and, you know, dress it up to the way you like it. Make it at home. It's so easy peasy. Open some. You don't even have to play around with your black beans or anything. Open them up and cook them up and cook up a little bit of rice. Throw minute rice in if you have to. And, it, you know, in a few seconds, look what you got. You can buy your salad already chopped up. You don't even have to chop it. Don't go out and spend $15 on a, on a burrito bowl. Make it at home. only takes, believe me, a few minutes. And it's so, so delicious. It truly is. And there's not any, there's nothing in here that's really bad for you. The rice, yes, has carbohydrates, but if you're not eating meat and stuff, you need, I think, for your body to run, you have to have, you know, some starch like that. You, you really, really do. For it to last you, just eating a salad is, is just not going to last you. So putting in a little bit of rice in there, 
and always always your beans don't forget about your beans you should eat beans even if you're not vegan or you're not vegetarian or whatever you should eat beans at least five days a week somehow throw them into your your uh whatever menu you're making throw it in there it, it can't hurt you don't want anybody to know you have beans in your food smash them up it acts as a thickener they won't even know there's beans a lot of my kids when they were growing up hated beans they refused to eat beans so i mashed them into very very like there was no bean left at all it was just mush and i would add it into a gravy whatever I wanted to put it in to thicken and they could not tell it was in there and it was delicious so I was getting the beans into them the beans are very very important for you as you see you see my baby he's had beans since he's been I don't know able to eat six months old I started giving him beans smashing them up and giving them to him and he will open a can of beans now and sit down black beans and eat the whole entire can he likes them that much if you get a child and you start them from the beginning of their life giving them really good things to eat that is how they will remain eating they may go off a little bit every now and then, but they'll come back to it. You see, like Nino, he gives me a hard time now with anything that's vegan or vegetarian. Why? Because he knows. He hears my other family members talking about the way I eat. And he doesn't like it. Not only that, he's used to eating rich food now. That's how my daughter cooks. That's how I cooked. I taught my daughter how to cook. And that's, you know, when you get the taste for that rich food, that's what you like. But he always comes back in the long run, like with the beans. And you give that child any kind of vegetable or any kind of fruit, he adores it because they gave it to him at such a young life. And that's what you really need. If you're new mommies out there, you really need to introduce all these things into your child's life. Also, at the age of six months, I started introducing baby Nino to peanut butter. I took a tiny dab of peanut butter and I would put it in his mouth just a little tiny dab now don't go crazy babies can choke on peanut butter you just want a little that's all it takes is a little bit and you build up the resistance in case so many children are allergic to the peanut butter now so you build them up and, and you really can do that by giving your child peanut butter at a very very young age not before six months they have to be sitting up eating. You just give them a little dab in their mouth. When I say dab, I mean just barely on your finger. But if a child is allergic to peanut butter, a dab would set them into, you know, uh, an allergic reaction. This way, when they're so young, they build up the resistance if they're going to be allergic to peanut butter. You research this. This is truly, truly true. Don't just listen to what I'm saying to you. Research it. Anyway, we're coming to the end of this video because I am getting very, very full. I'm at the end of as much as I can eat. I'm trying to get all my lettuce in and all my tomato. I don't like to waste the vegetables. 